and she didn't do anything and blah i'm just going off and i hear on the phone what that's me <gasps> that's oh, no i fucking knew it Hey guys, welcome back to the show. I'm Mario. And I'm Peter. And we're Guys, guys That, that listen. listen. On today's show, we got one of the coolest people I know, Rocky Angelini. <laughs> Yo, what up guys? How you guys doing? Thanks thanks for having me. You know, tell, us a, tell us a little about yourself, Rocky. What up everyone? My name is Rocky Angelini. I'm a rapper, musician, producer, performer um, from... Oregon originally, but oh, nice. now I live in Santa Ana, right around the corner. Literally, yeah. you're like right there. Yeah, <laughs> he's he's right behind us. Yeah, it took me like it took <laughs> me a walk to you. Yeah, it took me a minute. <laughs> nice, nice, cool, dude. So you, I saw you just went on tour, right? Yes, it yes. Was. I just got back from tour. Um, I went on tour with my homie Gremlin. I was telling you a little bit earlier yeah. before we started. Um, Gremlin and I used to be in a rap group together ten years ago that Dang. ended up disbanding. Um, since then, Gremlins found some success, and uh, he just ran his first tour, and he hit me up. Yes. And actually, originally, he kind of just hit me up to see if I'd be down to run merch. Mm. And I was going to be like, you know what? Yeah, I'm down. You know, yeah. get paid to do merch and get to kind of get a glimpse at what tour life looks like. But then he was like, you know, if, uh, if I can get you a spot on all these shows, are you down to do... Uh, merch oh, yeah. cool. for like a little less and then you get to perform at every spot and I was like sure let's run that because yeah. I have merch myself and so yeah. that's what we ended up doing so I was running Gremlins merch and performing at oh, every nice. show dude, I love that that's like pure hustle you yeah know? dude it's it was like... it was a lot man but it was really fun and a learning lesson so how many step uh, how many stops did you guys have we did 11 holy shit. um so just a quick rundown we went we started at um in Oakland we went to Oakland, Sacramento, wow. and then we went to Portland, Seattle, from Seattle to Utah, from Utah to Denver, uh, Colorado, and then we did another Colorado stop at Colorado Springs, and then after that, after a show actually, which was hectic, we, we drove like 13 hours to Arizona, oh, and whoa. then we went from Arizona to San Diego, and then the, the homecoming was LA. Wow, that's oh, nuts. Man. Yeah. What, what was the best show? The best show, man. Well, I'd say like sonically, the best show was um, San Diego. Oh. Uh, just from like a musician's point of view, like yeah. the way it sounded, that was yeah. my favorite mm. because the engineer was like throwing reverb and delay on me and oh, stuff. Wow. And I was like, shoo, I see you. <laughs> like, yeah, he's killing me. I, I, see, I see you back there, bro. <laughs> like, I appreciate you because um, as musicians, we go to so many venues that yeah. like, you know, they don't really know not prepared they said it and forget it and it's like sometimes it's it's not that great so that was my favorite the one that was most like lit and bizarre mm. was utah oh. surprisingly um so utah. A Mormon. i don't know if it's the cold weather or what <laughs> but like uh yeah some people were taking their shirts off and stuff wow. wait, wait guys or girls both wow. actually was yeah. it the mormons um <laughs> Shoot, man. It, I don't know if she was Mormon or not. Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> but like, yeah, she just took her shirt off really quick. Um, wow. And then there was like another guy who, and I, I have it on video somewhere, but oh. just big Gremlin fans, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like one guy pulled his shirt up and was like, Gremlin, I love oh. you. Oh. <laughs> so like That's... Utah got buck. Yeah. Um, Sounds wild. But the, the most like beyond just like, <laughs> yeah. but, but beyond like the bizarre <laughs> stuff, um, I'd say the most like lit was Sacramento. All right. Now, now I'm curious. You, you, you went on tour with them, so yeah. I'm pretty sure you kind of understand it a little bit better now. I've I've never been on tour, mm -hmm. so I'm I'm curious as to how he figures out like his destinations. Is someone like just booking him for each spot, or does yeah. he meet with like a manager who's like mm -hmm. tell him like, oh, this is how we find out like the most popular places, the places most likely sell out. Yeah, so he does have a team of people who are helping him with the logistics of mm -hmm. things. Oh, okay. um, I think with your first tour, mm -hmm. you're kind of just because the thing about the internet is is you can make a post and be like yo, if we come to this city, who's going to pull up? Yeah, yeah. And then, like, you might get a thousand people that say they're going to pull up, mm -hmm. but then but no nah, one does, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So I, I, think, I think he kind of got an idea of, like, what cities said they would show out. Yeah. And then it's kind of like you kind of just got to go see for yourself. Dang, that's you crazy. You know, and see if people are actually that's showing up. That's still so much better than how it was back in the day. Now, now at least you yeah. have the internet to gauge. Oh, yeah, you know? dude. There's so much, like, analytics now. You could, like... Mm -hmm. 
either on your SoundCloud or your Spotify, it can tell you like where your fans are. Yeah. yeah. And then they even tell you like uh they call it like super fans. Yeah. yeah. Where they play your track more than like thirty times a month. So it's like this person really oh. loves your shit. Yeah. So like they usually what I heard because like, you know, there's like a lot of like independent artists now, mm-hmm. they look for like those cities where it's like Oh, there's a thousand super fans there. They're more than likely yeah. to come out. They listen to my music every fucking day. Yeah. You know? And that's kind of how they choose their destinations. I'm a, yeah. I, I'm a super fan. Thank you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, dude. I can actually see who plays my music. And can you really? <laughs> <laughs> then you probably see that. Uh, I dude, play, <laughs> imagine that it comes to that. At one point, you know exactly who no, you are. I play, yeah. I played Red Light like a hundred times. Thank you, fam. <laughs> Appreciate it, man. That, that's Marty, you always come through with that supportive energy, bro. <laughs> he does. He does. He's a yeah, it's, 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 I'm gonna hit the red light. <laughs> that's it. But you know, I don't. I can't see specifically, but. Mm-hmm kind of there's a way to do it like there's spotify for artists oh, so I like i that. have an artist spotify so i can see like the playlists that i've been added to mm. and i got a couple playlists that are like r- called like literally titled replay and they have like oh. my highest amount of streams and i can see who created this and that is like someone who i would consider like a super fan because yeah. low key i don't even know if they made it to just listen to the song over and over mm-hmm. or if they were like intuitive enough to be like I can replay Rocky's songs and get his streams up mm. when I'm asleep. Yeah. Oh, you know? So yeah. that's a freaking that's so super fan. They got yeah. my stuff on replay Dang. when they're sleeping. Yeah. Did you see mine? Mine was titled Baby Making Music. Is that yours? That's mine. Dude, my <laughs> man. So you're so serious? No, 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 no. Oh, I was going to say. <laughs> no, I yeah. Yeah. Well, shoot. I got I a couple. I Mario Smash to music. <laughs> yeah, shoot. I got a couple of those, man. And then there's just like the off the rip weird ones. Mm. Like I saw one of them is called Butt Hair. Butt Hair. <laughs> And I'm like, okay, I don't know where you're going with that one, but like, okay. When you're, um, so you did this whole tour thing, obviously, like, do you open? Yeah. Okay. Do you feel that going to, do you feel like you've made new fans? Yeah, dude. Okay. Mm, Definitely, man. And it's really crazy because one thing I really felt on tour was just this feeling of like the appreciation for the art that you get when you're out of your city Mm. and it was really kind of enlightening to me because you know i think we're fortunate enough to be in a city um you know it's close to la we're in Mm. southern california and this community has a plethora of artists Mm. and like there's so many people doing it and so i think from an audience point of view like you got options Mm. but some of these places we went to oh. like you know this might be like oh. the event of the year oh shit i didn't realize that utah That's you crazy. know <laughs> yeah, yeah like, like this might be the event that they're gonna go to for six months where yeah. it's like for us maybe we got a show we could go to every weekend here. yeah and so it was really um i felt so loved bro like i felt so loved in a way that i haven't felt and not that i don't receive love here but yeah. it was just different man mm-hmm. like people really really resonated and appreciated what we were doing in those cities and um that was a beautiful thing to me and it it got me thinking a little bit like because you hear people say like you know you gotta leave your your hometown Mm -hmm. yeah you know and you no one ever wants to admit that because it's like that that um implies something Mm -hmm. like that can maybe imply something negative yeah but i don't think it has to i just think it's kind of human nature like we we see each other so much but you're like a, you're really like a shooting star when you go on tour mm-hmm. because you're mm-hmm. literally coming from another place boom you're a flash of light and then you're gone yeah Ooh. and so i felt like a shooting star on tour man and and i, I just want to say like thank you to anyone who saw me on tour and anyone who showed love um and resonated with what i was doing because i really felt the love and um this past week i've been decompressing and and honestly it felt like you're coming down a little bit off something yeah (laughs) because no no that's no i see that because you're just riding that high yeah that's that's what i've heard so it's like uh i've talked about recently too it's like when you get so many hits of like dopamine especially something like from a performance like you get you reach this high where he's like you just feel like you're in cloud nine right Mm -hmm. and then like what happens is like once you go back down you're falling below what you normally feel your baseline. 
So because of that, it feels like you're crashing, like you're coming down, like off of like a drug. It's very mm-hmm. similar. Like people who do XC, it's like it's like that. They get really high, high, and then once they fall down, they feel like depressed, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's that's because you're just getting so much stimuli, like all at once, like back yeah. to back. That it's like, oh, you're like, oh shit, this is reality. Like holy crap, I'm not like used to this, you know? Yeah. But that's interesting that you said that because I'm mm-hmm. I've never heard it from like a performers like aspect, but mm-hmm. I could totally see it. Man, it, it's also crazy because tour is so <laughs> fast paced. Yeah. Like we didn't have time to stay anywhere yeah. for more than a night. Like it's crazy to have been to all these places, but still feel like I haven't really been there yeah, because yeah. it's like, oh, it's, it's you know, work. Yeah. We're, we're working. Yeah. We yeah. like, we do the show. We drive far. We check into the hotel. We do the show. We crash out. We don't even go out because it's like, we know we got like mm-hmm. a 13 hour drive the yeah. next day. Yeah. And so it was kind of like getting put in a blender, bro. Yeah. Like, a dopamine blender mixed mm-hmm. with just like so much um, grind. And so then like just getting spit out of it and coming back to reality, you know, going back to my job and stuff. Mm-hmm. I, I definitely have experienced um, a little bit of like a, a crash, you mm-hmm. know? Yeah. And so now I'm like, but, but then it's just my decision on like, okay, what are you going to do? Are you going to, are you going to indulge in this crash? Yeah. Or are you going to indulge in the inspiration that you felt on tour? Okay. And and like take that and, and remember it. I feel like that. And and grind towards that, you know? Yeah. That that determines who you are as an artist, you know, or or as a person too, you know, it's like, cause then, cause then you're not falling into those lows. Yeah. I, I, I actually, you know, I really like that because it's like, uh, we don't we we don't usually talk about this, but it's like mm-hmm. the power of just like live music. Where like I'm I am not a musical person in general. Are but you I, karaoke all the time? Yeah, but I'm tone deaf. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tone deaf though. He's a great singer. I'm tone deaf. I don't I've had li- the privilege of seeing that before. Yes. Oh yeah, <laughs> that was he, awesome. You, you're welcome. <laughs> Dude, that, was, that was beautiful. <laughs> But it's like, okay, for me, I, I, I think it's really cool that like you got to like go to all these cities and I'm sure you've made all these new fans too. Cause like for me, the first time, I, so I, I saw Brian, I saw Apollo Bebop randomly here in downtown and I never, I never go to live music or anything like that. And I was like, holy shit, this dude's good. Like mm-hmm. this was really fucking good. And that was like my first entry into like the music downtown, like down here. Yeah. And then when I went to go see you, I saw you at Cygerstrom Art Center and I was mm-hmm. like, holy shit, Rocky's really good. Mm-hmm. Like, I didn't know. Yeah. Cause like we'd, we'd been friends and like we'd hung out and stuff mm-hmm. and like, mm-hmm. no, this, but I, I'd never really listened to his music. And I saw that and I was like, holy shit, this guy's good. Like, Thanks, and then since then I was like, you know, it catches on. You see mm-hmm. him once and it's like, Mm-hmm. It's yeah. and then I listen to the album and stuff. So I'm like, I, I imagine like you doing this tour, like you finding all these like new people. It's like a stepping stone towards like you know mm-hmm. your future. So like yeah. things that I, I'm sure every artist wants to blow up, wants to like you know get to that next point where you go on tour as well. Yeah. So do you do you feel like you're one step closer? Yeah, definitely. I definitely feel like I'm one step closer. Um, I think we're gonna do hopefully another run. Yeah. Oh, so. Nice. Um, there's talks of spring, you know, yeah. nothing, nothing solid till it's solid, but, yeah. um, I'm pretty sure that I'm going to be going on another run with gremlin, nice. um, and then p- potentially another run, like maybe run the whole, the whole U S depending on what gremlin wants to do. Um, but one thing I also really loved about tour was this learning opportunity because the difference of like what you know going back to what we were talking about earlier one positive thing about being in your community and performing art in your community is that like you know you're gonna receive the love that you're gonna get from oh yeah people that love you it's like, like a given almost yeah it's like yeah. you're gonna get love but when you go out on tour like these are people who have never heard you before yeah so you Ooh. need you need you need to be able yeah. to like how are you gonna connect with them And one thing I really learned, um, and I felt like I've been good with it before, but something that I I started to realize is so, uh, a very important part of being a performer and being an an artist, it's not only about the music you make, it's about the moments in between the songs you're performing. So Mm. you'll see people do performances and like, there's an awkward moment in between like their next song. They're looking at the, press play bro like <laughs> like because they haven't learned how to like address a crowd and i really loved having that opportunity to work on like how am i going to connect with these people who are here in front of me right now yeah. that i've never met before mm. so it gave me an opportunity to kind of you know like pay attention to 
like embrace those moments yeah. in between your yeah. songs. It's kind of like crowd work, yeah. basically. You know? Okay, yeah, like you okay. gotta talk to the people. Yeah, yeah. You we're, gotta let them know who you are. We're in front of you right now. How do you how do you connect with us? Yeah. So, um, for instance, like I have a song called Click. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and um, I, I ask people, has anyone in the crowd ever been in a situation where they have met someone mm-hmm. and you know? That's, that's my favorite song. Yeah. You know, like. <laughs> Have you ever been in a situation where you've met someone that you were interested in and in, uh, in physically you're very attracted to them? Mm. But like no matter what angle you guys try from, it just doesn't click. Like there's no chemistry. Uh. And it's kind of this feeling of like, geez, you're so fine. But like, yeah. why? Why is there? And so then you, you, you realize in that moment that love is so much more than physical attraction. Uh. So you, and you weave this story for and the crowd. Weave yeah. this story uh, into give something and, that they can all relate to. Yeah, and then like you know, this was the first time on tour that like, I was dedicating my song "Time Machine" to like my dad and just oh. o- like opening up about having lost my dad last year because yeah. my dad passed away last Sorry year. Here, and yeah. that's something that like I don't always talk about on stage, mm. but like the truth of the matter is that is a very important thing to share with people yeah. because like I remember one time someone told me when they came into a show like, oh, I knew right when I saw you like you're the most positive person like I could just tell that you have good energy and like I do have good energy but I'm also a person who's been through pain and so if you don't take the opportunity to share with your audience that you too have been experiencing pain then you're missing an opportunity to connect with people yeah. and once I started opening up, up about my dad it opened a whole nother level of connection with the people who were listening now people are coming to me I lost my dad last yep. year mm-hmm. thank you so much for sharing that you know and then the last thing I'll say in regards to <sighs> you know connecting with the audience like my brand is called oh okay Oh, okay. And so oh, okay is basically just the acknowledgement of levels to whatever pursuit you undergo. Mm-hmm. Like, I think it's important to recognize that there is mastery. Mm-hmm. Like there's people in whatever pursuit inspires you that are masters of the, their craft. Yeah. And for me, I, I take that like, dude, there's masters at this. And so acknowledging that there's levels in whatever it is you do. So you want to get so good at whatever it is you do that when people see you do it, they say, oh, okay. So then I ask them, <laughs> so, oh, you know? Okay, so, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. So yeah. then exactly. And like, if you don't know that, how can I expect you to connect with my yeah. brand? Yeah. And um, so like, I, and then I go into like, anyone have a job out in the crowd? You know, mm. like, oh, you, you might you might be there. You put your hand up and you say, oh, I, I run a podcast. And so then I say, oh, you want to be such a good podcaster that when people see you do it, they say, oh, OK, that's how you run a podcast. Oh, okay. And it was funny <laughs> to notice as we got like more in the Midwest, like the jobs started to get like the jobs that the crowd would have. Uh-huh. Which they, like by the time we were in like Utah, someone was like, I'm a molten metal like melter. Like I weld oh, wow. shit or something yeah, like yeah. I, me- I, like, I work in the coal mine. <laughs> <Yeah>, like, <laughs> <laughs> like, like I noticed these jobs started to get hardy more and more hardy. I'm like, dude, you fucking use your hands, you know? Yeah, but I, I would just say, like, you want to be such a good welder that when people see you do it, they say, oh, okay, that's how yeah. you weld. Yeah. And so you, you that, that's how you begin to build a relationship yeah. with your audience. I am really looking forward to seeing you build your fan base because for me, it was like at the right time, like I heard one song mm-hmm. and I heard you perform and I was like, oh, I'm a fan now. Nice. I heard uh, I heard click click yeah. was my favorite one. I was going through something. I was talking to a girl. She yeah. had rejected me, and his song goes like, um, "We we both wanted this to fit. It I didn't." I want to elaborate on that later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's just there's it one was short part. Lived. Was, yeah, it was short lived, so we didn't, we didn't need, need tissue. tissue. Uh, crazy thing is, I left a good, good thing, thing for, for you. you. Yeah, you know, yeah. like. Dude, that song um, hit so hard. I was like, yeah. I had that. Sh- I was like, it was like summer, and I was yeah. sad, and I was like going yeah. through it, and I was just playing Rocky all the time, and I'm like, yeah. we yeah, both because, wanted dude. this to fit, it didn't click. Yeah, because of, like the situation I wrote that song about, like I had, I was talking to someone yeah. before mm. who like we were getting along pretty well, and like mm. I, you know left that situation in pursuit of this other one only to find like that there was nothing there Mm, you know okay um but there's also this one part that that people really love in that song and it's my favorite part like towards the end where there's these hits that are like sometimes i I feel feel like this love thing ain't ain't for for me." me you know and like that part especially ending the song really softly with just like sometimes i feel like this love thing ain't for me like 
people feel that shit, bro. Yeah, because, dude, that shit hits. Because the dating scene can be hectic. Yeah. Like, it's hard to find someone, you know? No, nah, dude, I feel that. that on it, I don't always say, like, certain songs, like, really, like, resonate with me. Like, the few times, it's always been, like, Kendrick songs. Yeah. But one of the songs is actually a Rocky song where it was, like, I was going through it and, like, you know, that last part, too, where it's, like, you know, you go through some, at least I go through so many people and I'm, like, I date and I date. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I'm, like, man. Did you like, say you go through so many people? In the in this sense where, like, I. <laughs> this guy's sense, ran through, bro. Sir, sir, in the sense where I date, like, I've dated a lot, you know? Like, yeah. I've dated so many people and I'm, like, damn, sometimes I feel like this love thing ain't for me, you know? Yeah. Okay, I, I'm kind of curious. Uh, do you date a lot, too, Rocky? Or? I have a girlfriend. He is happily. Prior, prior? Did you um, date a lot? I. R- did I date people before that? Yeah, like yeah, groupies. No, <laughs> no, no, hey, no, um, so like it's crazy because I was in a pretty serious relationship out of high school, okay. and that lasted four years. Mm. Yeah, yeah, and then I didn't have a girlfriend for ten years. Whoa, so, Priscilla is my first girlfriend. Shout out for, to Priscilla. Hey, yeah, Priscilla, Priscilla, I love her so she much, man. She's, She's so dope. cool. She's and uh, yeah, so now uh, me and Priscilla are together, and we're just we're riding the wave, you know, yeah. the love wave. So, so was that like ten year gap just absent of any women, or was just? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, it wasn't. It wasn't absent. Like I said, okay. he had groupies. I felt like even when I was kind of dating around and stuff, and just having like fun, mm-hmm. I always kind of felt like I, I wanted to save. You know, a magician never shows all of his cards right away. <laughs> wait, in the, wait, so I wouldn't. I wouldn't lead this, with I'm a rapper. You know, this, yeah. like a little cherry on oh, top. Okay, I thought uh. in this metaphor. I thought in this metaphor, <laughs> your tricks are your dick. But uh, <laughs> yeah, you would think that. You would fucking think that. It's, it's the rapper. Thing. Okay, yeah. okay, got it, got it. Some pull a rabbit out of the hat. You know? Yeah. Oh, they just pull something else out. Where is the second kind? <laughs> yeah. No. No. Yeah. Like I, 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 I have, I have my fun. You yeah, know. Yeah. Yeah. Um. But Priscilla just like, you know, she she just like Priscilla offers so much as a partner. Oh, yeah. mm. You know what I mean? Like yeah. Priscilla is one of the most inspiring people I know. Nice. And um, she's also been through so much with me. And I've just come to find, dude, like building a love with her has been such a fruitful experience mm. you know so i definitely had had my time and stuff but um happily with priscilla who's just like a go-getter and she really balances me out because left to my own devices i'm a very like go with the flow kind yeah. of person like i am very much in the wind so you need that person to push you a little bit yeah or and like even if they're not pushing me like pushing herself yeah, and leading by example mm. like priscilla is like a manifestation master yeah like i have so much to learn from her still like priscilla speaks something into the universe and it comes true oh i love that it's awesome. and like fast like oh, really? she, yeah oh. <laughs> she, yeah like she really She's um, like, rocky done <laughs> boom <laughs> That took a little time. Oh, but, yeah. damn. No, but no, it was because it was just like a timing thing. Yeah. Um, originally, like we had been dating and it was like right before I started uh, hosting the Cool Lab. And I actually asked her to be my girlfriend. And then uh, she was like, no. Oh. oh, you know, and then me being me, I was like, was well, this 2020? This was probably 2020. No, this was even before, dude. Okay. This was like this was like 2018, mm. 2019 cuz I've been hosting the Cool Lab coming up on 4 years and yeah, nice. um after she said that, I'm very like much stubborn, yep. you know? Right. I'm like I'm like, "All right, well then why are we like hanging out?" Oh. If like we're not going to become a couple, like that's what I was trying to work for. And then, so I kind of was like, I need to do my own thing and I'm going to do the inner work, you know? Yeah. You and should. then like maybe three months later we were hanging out and like, you know, it all came up. Yeah. Mm. And then, um, she, she said that she, you know, she kind of regretted her decision at that time. And, oh. um, but I was already like, well, I've already done the inner work. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm already there. I'm at peace. Yeah. I'm at peace. <laughs> yeah. So then it wasn't for like another nine months, dude. Yeah. Oh, wow. Before well, we got together. Well, I remember in 2020, you and I talked about it. You were drunk. Mm. Uh, at, <laughs> <laughs> what? We, we were at... Uh, oh, shoot. Um, mm-hmm. We're down here in Nata Sanana, and you were telling me a little bit about it. And I was like, oh, damn. I'm like, all right. This is before yeah. you guys got together together. Yeah. So I, this has been going on for a long time then. Yeah, but there's yeah. always been like a kinetic energy between yeah. us. There's always been like a spark. So even yeah. that nine months where like we weren't together, it was definitely still brewing in there. Yeah. 
I just think I kind of was being a little bit stubborn, you know, yeah. and and was like, oh, well, I'm fine now, yeah. you know. But truth be told, like, she's my she's my baby. So oh, it, it just it just came back around, you know. So I'm, I'm curious because that's your experience with yeah. you and your girl right now. And mm-hmm. I don't ask about Mario enough, to be honest. Like when it's on the show, it's usually <laughs> yeah, it's sure. usually focus on. <laughs> no, guests. let's talk about and you guys, out, man. man. <laughs> but no, no, just because now that I hear like your story yeah. and then you're like, oh, this is the love that I've been looking for. It's so mm-hmm. fruitful. You know, this is more than I would even expect, right? Mm-hmm. And Mario on the other side, he's like, oh, I've been ran through so much. I don't know if this That is not what I said at all. <laughs> that, is not, that was so, not my words at all. <laughs> you know, like you say, like, is this love thing for me? Like, do, yeah. you, do you still feel that? Or is that something that just kind of comes back from time to time after dating? Um, it comes back from time to time. Yeah? You know, it, it's more of like when I have these like relationships that like, okay, like I see you and Priscilla, you guys look so happy together. You guys... Mm. Dude, she's she she's so cool. She's working in the merch booth for him, selling all his stuff, and I'm like, damn, like that's a good girlfriend, you know? I remember I met her at this jam that she came to that Vilga did and with Donovan. And then like later that day she had like a content like video out, like already like by the end of the Her like, videos are really good. Yeah, I was her like, videos that was are, fast. Even random like like the fucking like the hangouts at the park and this whole thing. I'm like, yeah. damn, she you know good. Saying, like yeah. so I'm saying, Hey, yeah, maybe he, we should hire her instead of this guy. Like, <laughs> 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 But I see, I see stuff like that, you know, and mm-hmm. it's like I have these relationships, and I, I, I wouldn't say they fail, but it's like they don't reach this like penultimate point where I, mm-hmm. I assume I want my relationship to go. So sometimes mm-hmm. I feel that way, where I'm like, damn, I feel like you know, down in the dumps, and like yeah. that's when I, you know, I heard his music and stuff. And I'm like, yeah, I feel this, like, yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, I, I know, I'm never. Think about me. I'm always very positive. Very even when even when I'm down, I'm still like kind of positive. Yeah. Where mm-hmm. it's like I'm always still hopeful. I'm like, yeah, the mm-hmm. next one's gonna like be better. Yeah. Always the next one's gonna be better. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't. What, what was your question? I don't know. I was, I was just wondering <laughs> if it's like a mindset that you've had for like a while, or yeah. it just comes and goes every no, time. No, that comes. The, you know the, I mean? like, the bad part comes and goes. Where like a down in the dumps comes and goes. For me, I'm always positive on yeah. the outlook. Like, yeah, one day I'll find that, that right person. One day I'll find like you know that true love or like something yeah. like that. Okay. I, I always yeah. I always stick to that. That's What's your perception on it, Peter? Honestly, uh, personally, for me, I think it's. Uh, my, I guess people call me more cynical than Mario. You're definitely but, more uh, cynical. So, like for instance, my one of my favorite examples is like my mom. Right, she's like dated around enough. She's been married twice, twice mm. divorced, and like for me, she's always looking for someone. You know, and I think mm. in the Asian community, especially Vietnamese people, they, they think of you as kind of like a failure if you don't get married. Yeah, right? that's and, true. And, and that's she's been married, but true. she's divorced, right? Yeah. So they just see her as like, oh damn, no one wants her, or whatever. But and I think that plays a part of her, like, constantly seeking someone else. Oh. And I think, for me, I would just want her to be, like, happy just by herself. Yeah. Even if it doesn't, you know, no one else comes along. Mm. And, you know, like, at a certain point, I can imagine she's probably a little disheartened, right? Because she's in her 50s now. Mm. So she's probably like, oh, you know, like, when is this ever going to happen to me, you know? And I, and I also do understand, like, younger people are allowed like this time frame to feel like, yeah, there's the next one. There's the next one, you know? And, but I also imagine like, as you get older, you're like, fuck, my time is like yeah. getting closer, you know? Like, what do I do at this point? No, that's how I feel too. Yeah. Oh, you, but, feel, yeah. you feel like the pressure <sighs> of like not seeming like a failure gets in the way of her ability to like match with a partner that is actually, um, it's What's both. The word? It's compatible, it's compatible. But yeah, it's, it's both. It's like, uh, one, she, because she can't find enough, like, love for herself just like just being filled by being with herself that she's rushing into relationships that oh, are not yeah. the best for her you know and like for me i've i've never i'm like the opposite of mario you know i'm not ran through but like stop <laughs> <laughs> so like i i end up in relationships that are very like long you know like four years yeah. ten years uh, like long ass relationships oh, ten. yeah and, no yeah, yeah. It is long. yeah super long you know and yeah. like uh for me it's like uh i've experienced like love multiple times and it's always like super serious. It's not like very short. And because of that, I just feel like I am more than happy, like by myself and I'm, I'm more than happy with the amount of love that I've experienced. And yeah. I, I like, I'm, I just think about it like this, like life doesn't owe you anything. Yep. Right. I know 100%. people who've never been in love. Right. I've had that chance multiple times. And to me, I'm like, I'm forever grateful for that. So I, I don't need to like, feel like I need someone else so I don't rush into anything which allows me to find more like suitable people 
I agree with that. Yeah. I mean, for at least, at least for me, like I agree completely with that. I don't, I don't rush into things exactly. And mm-hmm. you, you and I have the same mindset on that. Where mm-hmm. it's like yeah, yeah. you have to be happy with yourself first mm-hmm. before you. I, I, I believe that you have to be happy with yourself first before you can get into with somebody with someone else. Yeah. The mm-hmm. problem for me is, it's like I find people and they're not happy with themselves. They need to be mm-hmm. happy with me. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and that that's usually the issue I run into. Where it's like I've done my deep work. I've done a lot of work on myself. I've tried to fix all my toxic traits. You know. But then when I did, <laughs> I, I've tried. I said I've tried. Yeah, 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 no, <laughs> I, I heard that. that. It's, 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 it's hard to find sometimes like people who match you at your level too, where it's mm-hmm. like, hey, like I've done my deep work. I've, you know how you were talking, like, you know, you've done your deep work, you mm-hmm. did all your shit. And it's like someone who has also done their work where it's because we're not all perfect. Like mm-hmm. we're, we're all flawed. But yeah. someone who's done all that shit and is at that level, that's always a little bit hard for me to find. Yeah. I feel like um, a lot of people still get caught up in finding the perfect person. Yeah. Like, I think that's the thing that gets in a lot of people's way Yeah, is looking for this perfect person. And I definitely think that there's there's different um, situations where you're going to get offered the the base of a relationship. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, um, I, I do feel like a majority of the fruit that comes out of a relationship is the work you do in the garden of love together. Mm -hmm. And you know, like the perfect person dude just doesn't exist. Oh yeah. No, it just (laughs) doesn't exist. But what you want to find is the person who's worth tending to the garden with, Mm. you know, and just having those qualities that are, um, in this metaphor, what is the garden? The garden is the successful relationship. So it's both of you together. It's both of you together. It's like, is this thing going to be a success or is it not? Yeah. And that depends on how much time you're willing to spend in the garden mm. together. You know, if, if you're not willing to tend to the garden of your love, then you, can ex- you can't expect to bear fruit. Yeah. And mm. I think um, through our perception of love, through all the ways we were fed it growing up, our ideologies of love, our romanticizing of love, a lot of people don't even understand what love really is. And so when they come into a situation where all of a sudden the love takes effort, Mm -hmm. they start to think that that it's not love. But it's like, love takes effort, too, to cultivate. You need to cultivate love. A lot of effort. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. You know, and... And the beautiful thing about love is when we take the time to cultivate it, we get to share the fruit of our hard work together. And Mm -hmm. so there's times in a relationship, um, and I know you know for sure going through a 10-year relationship, where like there's going to be moments where it's, it's tougher than other moments, like where you're frustrated at each other or... Um, things aren't going the way that a perfect love should be. Yeah. But it's like, are you willing to bring those things out onto the table with your partner and express to them like, hey, this is how I'm feeling? Um, and then is your partner willing to not dismiss that and mm-hmm. like say, I love you enough to examine this together. Yeah. And, you know, and that's how that, I definitely think that um, a lot of people, man, just like don't they fantasize everything. So mm. there's a fantasy of love where it's just going to always be roses. Yeah. And it's like, no, dude, <laughs> like there's times where you might not agree. Yeah. There's times where you might get angry at the other person. But when you love someone you you circle back and you make it work and then on the other end of that is this flourishment where you can look at each other and say wow like we worked on that together don't mm. you feel better now i love you i love you too <laughs> <laughs> i think i think especially as we get older too um i think when we're early like people get puppy love yeah and so maybe if people's first experience with love is like puppy love yeah and so then as they get older, they think it's always supposed to be puppy love. But it's like, no, nah, we ain't puppies anymore. You know, like. No, he's a dog. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, shoot, life is woof. 
<laughs> you know? oh are you a rapper? <laughs> you must be a rapper or something. Large, and bro. so it's like, man, but I do think the more and more you transcend those things with your partner, yeah. like the more willing you are to to go through those hard times with them and to to like do that work together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because you can kind of see this pattern of like, oh shoot, it's it, it's it's love. And then all of a sudden it's like there's something at hand. And then it's like you work on it together and then it's even greater love. Mm. And like love gets Ooh. greater the more you go through with someone. Have you experienced that? Since you've been like a tenure and everything? Like, like uh, greater love? I yeah, I think so. I, I kinda get like like both sides actually like he he's, he's gonna i'm gonna say he says it from a very positive like perspective right yeah you're i'm cynical. gonna say from where it's like a little <laughs> he's bit very less cynical positive, right? <laughs> yeah. I, like i think love is extremely Im- ambiguous and subjective yeah. so because of that like you know whether it's puppy love or adult love or you know love for like a significant other or family member whatever it is right i, I think it's truly still love no matter how you square it up because mm-hmm. at the very end it's it's subjective to you like right now there's no way to define it really you know what i mean because someone could like love you and not really do all the things that show you that they love you you yeah. know what i mean and and yeah. you get that from like your yeah. parents you know my pops i know he loves me yeah. but he's not gonna be one to say it you mm-hmm. know what i mean and then i know people who say like i love you and that i know they probably don't mean anything by it <laughs> yeah. I love yeah. You. yeah and i think like yeah. regardless of how it is it's it has to fit like how you feel about it you know yeah. I mean, if, if you want in your life, it's a two way street. Yeah. yeah Actions speak louder than words. Yeah. Yes. A hundred percent, a hundred percent, you know? And I, I think like, uh, I've had moments where I'm like, I've tried to work on things, you know, and, and sometimes it gets better and sometimes it doesn't like, no matter how much you love each other, because in the end it's, is like a feeling. Right. Mm-hmm. And like when you try to rationalize like love by like certain actions and stuff like that, mm-hmm. some people don't have the same like interpretation as you do. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like, mm-hmm. um, yeah. when I was in like that long relationship, I was like, yo, like, I think we need to go see like couples therapy, yeah. mm-hmm. like counseling or something or an individual, you know, oh, to when work you guys went to go see me. <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, that it's someone else. You know, not, I not, think we need to go see Mr. Steel, your girl. Baby. <laughs> yeah. The wrong piece of advice for sure. Yeah, I need great advice. All right. <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, to her, she saw it as like, oh, you, uh, you think something's wrong with this. Do you think uh, something's no, wrong with me? No, that's another step. Towards of course, of yeah. course. You, but again, yeah. it depends on the person. You know what yeah. I mean? The way they perceive it. Yeah. And like yeah. some people might be defensive because there is maybe a little trauma that they don't want to like unravel. Yeah. Something that might be sensitive to them Mm -hmm. you know and i think it's it's tough because no matter what like love especially when you're in a relationship it has to be in a way that they understand it or Mm -hmm. else they're not gonna feel that they love you even though that's the way you might communicate your love yeah i totally hear you too because i do think that there are certain actions Mm -hmm. that obviously show we care yeah um but like for me recently i've been dealing with you know like it's interesting. I, I hear you out when you say like people can love you and not show it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, I don't know if you guys have ever been in a position yourselves where you love people, but you haven't been showing it. All the time. Um, but yeah, I, all the time. I, I really have been in that place for the past year. And mm. it's, it's brought a lot of guilt because I've been grieving the loss of my father. Yeah. And within my grief, I retreated into Mm. myself so much that I became, I turned into a hermit, Mm. you know, and I've noticed that like, I haven't been able to show up for people in the same way that I used to because the pain and the grief and the trauma that I've been dealing with losing my father. And so it's just crazy how people can take that lack of action that's being shown for you Mm -hmm. from you and then they think that like you don't love them yeah or that you don't like rocky maybe isn't the best friend why doesn't he text me back when i text him why doesn't he do this when i do that and it's like literally i love you but i'm dealing with so much trauma Mm -hmm. and grief that like i don't even know how to process Mm -hmm. that like it's blocked me like i've Literally the past year I've felt energetically blocked and I've had guilt for not being able to show up for people and that's in the more way, dreaming, right? Oh, yeah. In the way that I would want to. And and I catch myself 
behaving in certain ways and I know better, but when you're dealing with a block inside of yourself that has yet to heal, Mm -hmm. you find yourself behaving in ways that to some might not reflect to them as love or like you care. Yeah. Yeah. But really it's like, bro, I'm, I don't even know what the fuck's going on no. mm-hmm. in my life. I, I'm, I'm trying to heal this stuff. So I hear you. And like, I do think it's important for people to make that distinction and to not take things so personally. Yeah. Like if you don't, if someone isn't like, have you inquired with the person who you are maybe inwardly accusing of not loving you? Have you actually inquired with how, have you checked in on them? Mm -hmm. Or are you just upset that you're not receiving the attention that you think you deserve from Mm -hmm. someone who is supposed to be your friend? I I always try and give people the benefit of the doubt. And like, I think the people in your life, the ones that are maybe socially apt enough or emotionally intelligent enough, no, like, bro, your dad just passed away. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. a huge fucking hit. Like, you know, they'll give you that space. They'll know like, hey, yeah, maybe Rocky's not texting me back. He's going through his shit, you know? And this isn't something like, oh, he's going to be good in a month. No, dude, that's a, a year-long thing. More lifetime, than that, you know? Dude. It's a lifetime yeah. thing. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's it's crazy because like, I, 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 when you went, when you're going through that, like, I think about that. And my, my buddy, my buddy Oscar too, his dad just passed away. Your dad just passed away. And I take that and I take it into my own life. And I'm like, damn, what's going to happen with like my dad passed away. Mm-hmm. And I try and prepare myself for that because like, I know our, all our parents are going to pass away and I know it's fucking going to hurt. You know, yeah. I know it's going to hurt. I know it's going to be tragic and stuff. And I try and prepare myself for that. I, I try so hard to like imagine it and feel it. I'm like, am I going to be okay? Is this going to be like an okay moment? But it's yeah. like, dude, I, you know, even though you don't show your pain fully, like I, you know, some of it comes across, like I see it and I'm like, and I think about it with my dad. Cause I love my dad. I, I know you love your dad too. As yeah. flawed as both of our dads are like, mm-hmm. you know, you feel that and you see it when someone else's dad passes away, like you fucking feel that you yeah. see it. And it's like, damn like am i gonna be okay you know as much as i want to say like i understand like where you're coming from i, I don't because that my my parents are alive you know and like like i i know that pain is probably gonna be like insane yeah. once the day comes you know yeah and like uh i i just try to be as empathetic as i can to like towards other people and i used to be fucking not empathetic <laughs> at all like at all dude I, I used to be like man what the fuck's wrong with this person why are they acting like this or you know why did not show up for this and now i'm more like okay you know maybe they got some shit going on yeah and 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 like i forgot the word for it but uh, what you're talking about about um preparing yourself for grief is actually like a healthy practice yeah uh, i forgot what it's called but there's a term for it and um, it is actually encouraged. I oh. do think that it can lighten lighten the blow a little bit yeah. if you if you kind of put yourself in that situation, kind of meditating on the reality that your parents aren't going to be there forever. Yeah. yeah. Um, with my dad, um, you know, he 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 developed cancer, uh-huh. and um, it just came so fast. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Like it just came fast, and. Um, like, you know, it's just like, that's my dog. Yeah. You know, I know like, I hear I know, you guys. Man. Like, I know we all have relationships with, like, our parents. But, like, that's my fucking dog. Know. You know, so. From the beginning. So, from being, like, just, like, you got your dad who you talk to all the time. Who's, like, your number one supporter. Who's your best friend. To just being, like, yo, you got, like, three months. <sighs> you know, you got three months. Like, it was just hard, dude. And, and like, in that moment, like, you don't really have the time to just, like, you don't have the time to grief yet. You go into, like, help mode. Like, I flew up to Oregon and, and, and like, I, I, it was me and my mom and my brothers came down and, like, you move into, like, caretaker. Yeah. Where, like, Do everything I just can. moved into everything I could to just make sure that his transition was like as peaceful as possible. And that like he knew that like I was there for him. And it's like you, you, you go through like 
dude, cancer's not fucking easy. Like that yeah. shit hurts. Like, <sighs> it's fucking painful. Like, you know, and so um, there's a lot of stuff that like happened within that time within just two months of me being in Oregon, taking care of my dad. Like there's a lot of stuff that I had to go through and, um, like it hurts to even think about the memories I have because like, you know, you want to do your best to just like honor your parents. Yeah. But like when I think about my dad's death, like sometimes I can't help but think about like, maybe there is a moment where I'm like lifting him from one side of the bed to the other. And like, I can hear his physical pain, you know? And so like, you are like, you know, you're not contributing to the pain, but like, you don't ever want to be inflicting pain on Mm -hmm. someone you love so much, you know? And so like, that's the kind of stuff that's been hard for me to like process. And it's crazy because like, I still have so much work to do in regards to like healing that experience. And it's crazy because knowing my dad, like you can intellectually tell yourself, you know, like your dad would want you to be happy. Yeah. Like your dad would want you to like keep pushing on, but that doesn't eliminate like, or, or disregard the pain that you experienced in that moment with your family. And so, um, that's the shit that's that's the shit that grips you you know like the shit that sometimes i'll think about my dad dude and like i'll think about i'll think about how he died yeah and it's like how do you move from thinking about how your dad died to just like honoring and remembering his life and i do feel like i'm i feel like i'm i'm getting closer to a space of just being able to be like you know what, man, like, fuck yeah, this is what my dad would want for me. Mm-hmm. And he would want me to go out there and shred it. He wouldn't want me to be sitting here as a hermit, not showing up for people, not showing up to the fucking job. And he would want me to go crush my dreams. And that's the wave that I'm like trying to ride, Yeah, you know, but you, I don't think you can really get there without acknowledging how fucking painful it is um, to lose someone you love. Yeah. And so it's crazy, bro. Like I thought that I, I thought a year later, like we just had a year anniversary. It's already been a year. And like, I thought by now I'd be able to speak on grief, yeah. but like, <laughs> dude, it's just, uh, it's just such a complex um, thing to tangle with. And like, dude, you're going to have to, yeah. Like, you know, it's me right now. It will be you guys later. Yeah. And you guys will have to, 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 to go through it. And, you know, like, and it's even harder to talk about it, too, because, like, my dad was so fucking just brave. And, like, the way he went through his transition was so honorable. He went through it with so much grace. Like... This man, um, and just a little bit about my dad. Uh, so my dad was a movie producer. That's cool. So um, he produced movies growing up. The last one he did was um, this movie called A River Below. And him and my mom actually went to Columbia and they shot this documentary. And it was on Netflix. It's a Netflix documentary oh, about nice. this um, river dolphin. And... Mm. That was the last thing you guys, he did. So if you guys want to check it out, you can find it. It's okay. called A River Below. That's the last movie my dad produced. And so, like, but the thing is, man, like, my dad still had dreams. He was working on projects. Like, he had goals and ambitions that I wanted nothing more in the world to see my dad accomplish his ultimate fucking goal. And so that was one of the most crushing things about his death is that it was felt like it was too soon because he still had work to do and he was still chasing his dreams. But one thing I learned from my dad, man, is just like his tenacity towards his art Mm -hmm. and his validation towards the life of the artist. Like, that's why I can go 
forever being an artist because I've seen it in my lineage. Like mm. my grandfather was an actor. My grandfather was in Seinfeld. My grandfather was oh, wow. in Home Alone. My grandfather <laughs> was in Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. Like oh, wow. I come from a family of artists, but that means I've gotten to take a glimpse into what it means to pursue a passion through your, through your life and to not give up. Yeah. Because a lot of people give up. <clears throat> my grandfather, he was an actor since he was in his like early 20s. My grandpa didn't reach success until he was the old man. Oh, like no. he was famous for being the old man. Yeah. <laughs> like and but he got his bag. Like he fucking did it. Yeah. And he never let anybody to tell him to stop. And I think that's the true artist way. Like an artist is an artist in his fucking soul. And you should never ever compromise your artistry just for the sake of monetary accomplishment or success or like bro like this shit is in us yeah and so that's given me a little bit more leeway to allow myself to develop into the artist that i wish to be because I could say, man, I'm angsty. I want to get it right now. I've been doing this for 10 years. I want to blow up. Like, I want it right now. Like, what? Something's got to give. Mm -hmm. But it's like, or, like, for me right now, like, I'm still developing my artistry. And since I have a lineage that showed me that you don't need to rush your craft, you need to just love it and pursue it, I've given myself time to allow myself to refine the things that I think I need to refine in myself in the timeline that I so dictate because you're not going to tell me that, Hey bro, that's a, that's a young man's game, bro. Mm. Like you need to, oh, you better get it now. It's like, no, see me in 10 years and I'm going to have taken the time to develop, to develop the skills that I need. Um, and I learned that from my parents, but it was really hard for me to just want this last thing for my dad, for him to accomplish this last thing, and, and for him to have been taken out of the game a little early has been really hard for me. But like we were talking about earlier, it's like, am I gonna stoop into this feeling of hermetic like dread? Or am I going to fucking take that baton, know where I come from, and honor my ancestors and pursue my, my thing? Yeah. You know? And that's what we're going to do, baby. We're going to get it. <laughs> you know? Let's go, bro. No, that's... that's uh, wow, that was, <sighs> that was fucking crazy, to be <sighs> honest. Like, I... Because I think after hearing what you're saying about your dad and how much you admire him, his artistry, and, like, how much... Because... You're right, dude. Like, you got to have time to grieve. You got to have time to be that hermit more than, like, you're human. You're, you're allowed to feel, you know what I mean? But, like, how do you pick yourself up from that when you know you got shit to do, right? Like, you know you got things to accomplish. And, like, I've, I've seen that into, you know, I've had a couple of people pass, not my parents. But, you know, like, I feel like everyone that passes as close to me, I feel very similarly. Like, maybe not to that degree, but I think, like, I always think like, what would they, what would they want me to do? What would they have, what would have they, what would they do if they were still here? You know, I had a friend, uh, I was just talking about with Amaro, yes. uh, our good friend. He passed away on his 25th birthday. Right before uh, he got his dream job. Got his Sorry, dream guys. job, just graduated school, celebrated his birthday with us the night before. And he was leaving his job and like a car, a uh, team on him and he passed away. And he, yeah, his whole life ahead of him, you know, and and I always think like, damn, dude, like he could accomplish so much. The dude was super talented, but even beyond that, he was just like a great guy, you know. In my mind now, the way I honor him is I always think like, oh, what would S do? Because like, if yeah. everyone is a little hey, bit more like too. S, yeah, the world would be a better place, you know. And yeah. I think that's the only thing we can do to kind of like grieve is that they didn't leave us with nothing, you know. what I mean, they left something for us to like cherish and carry forward and pass it on you know and mm -hmm. and just like how you're doing this and i'm i'm assuming you you might have kids in your future too mm -hmm. you're probably gonna pass that baton you're gonna continue to pass that baton that, that baton's only gonna be holding greater weight because it's gone down your lineage and you know what i mean and, and it doesn't necessarily have to be within your family i'm sure it's same thing with your friends you know like like For sure i'm gonna like I, my my family is not artistic at all. You know, my dad is just like a very hardworking dude. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? He's just a fucking grinder, right? But what I'm going to take from that is like this guy like pushed the limit in, in every way to like 
help provide for his family, you know? And, Dude, which and is fucking commendable. Yeah, and I'm going to take that and I'm going to pass on to the next group of people. And not mm-hmm. saying I'll ever have kids, but like anyone that I'm involved with, you know, I want to push these lessons out because I think like a lesson passed forward is going to be something that helps like the future generations like grow beyond the past, mm-hmm. you know? So like for me, hearing that about you and your dad and not experiencing myself, mm-hmm. and, you know, like maybe I can't do like how Mario does where like he could – imagine himself in that situation yeah but i definitely do have like a better understanding like what to do if i ever feel down Mm -hmm. like i'll understand it's okay yeah dude. and i understand that like when i want to pick myself back up once i'm allowing because because you know i think one of the things that is super important to guys is like we're finally kind of like allowing ourselves to feel you know Mm -hmm. like men's mental health is like is it's down there right now you know what i mean mm-hmm. and i think like uh being able to speak upon it like mm-hmm. finally and like allow ourselves to understand like it's okay to be fucking sad it's okay yeah. to be like in the fucking like the darkest place you've ever been because like your parents passed you know what yeah. i mean like and that's totally fucking understandable it's crazy because we live in such an occupied society we live in such a f- busy world that it's funny how bro like oftentimes when i'm crying it's because i'm fucking doing a podcast or like i'll I'll, 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 I'll cry i'll cry like on stage but i won't cry at home yeah because like it's crazy that you really need to create the time and the space for yourself to process these emotions or else it starts coming out anytime you know like I'm doing a show. I'm like, bro, I don't want to be freaking sobbing every time. But, <laughs> but like, it's like, like I told myself, man, when I got back from tour that I would put more time into processing what happened okay. mm-hmm. because it's so easy when you're grieving a loss to bury your grief mm-hmm. in the day to day life yeah. because it, we're never short of things to do. We could fill up oh, yeah. every single day mm-hmm. with an objective and objectives are great deflectors. Mm-hmm. You can fucking avoid all the pain all the time just by keeping yourself busy. Yeah. There's really just like two more things that I like to speak about on go off, grief. Baby, go off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the first one is really just for anyone who is grieving to give yourself grace. Um, grace is so important in grief to give yourself grace. And if you're a friend of someone who's grieving, giving them grace. What does that mean, Rock? What does Rock? What does grace mean? Like giving yourself grace. I would say giving yourself grace is allowing yourself to feel the way you feel mm. without judgment. Okay. Um, that's grace. Um, grace is being patient with yourself. Grace is not putting a time on when you should feel better or when your friends should feel better. Grace is allowing for the, the timeline to roll out uh, the process of healing. Grace is allowing healing to happen in the time that it's going to take. Um, so allow yourself to be graceful with yourself. Allow yourself to be graceful and patient with your friends who are grieving a loss, whatever that loss may be. Mm-hmm. Um, the second thing I would like to say is that like I take my dad with me everywhere I go, Um, especially for things that are important to me. Like my dad's with me right now because this was my dad's hat. Mm. Adrian Adrian complimented this hat when I came in. This is my dad's hat. And so for me, especially when I'm doing things that are um, hallmarks of my pursuit, my passion, my love, my joy, my happiness, my performances, my music. Last night I had a show in Glendale with an amazing artist, Joey Naz, and I was performing with the band and like I wore my dad's king jacket. Oh, nice. Like I take my dad with me. Anytime I'm doing something special, anytime I'm doing something that I think he would be proud of, I bring him with me. So this is actually my dad's hat. So I I keep my dad with me everywhere I go. And for anyone who's dealing with grief um, and the loss of someone, just know that like you can always bring them with you. And although they're physically gone, their spirit is still there. And these items that they left behind, they hold power. They're precious. They're 
they're filled with love and I can touch this hat and I can feel my dad with me. So although my dad is gone, I make sure to bring him with me on all my most fun moments, mm. all my moments that I know I'm going to be proud of, all the opportunities that I take, I take my dad with me. And um, it's important to know that people can take their people with them as well. Fuck, I love that so much. Yeah, my dad's name <sighs> was Mike. 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 Shout out to Mike. Mike, Shout out to Mike. Mike. Mike Irwin, actually. Oh. So Angelina. Last name's Irwin? Yeah, so Irwin is actually my mom's maiden name. Oh. So my mom's family's from Panama. I'm mm. second generation Panamanian. Mm. Um, my dad's last name was Irwin. Mm. Um, his my dad's side of the family is Irish yeah. and I think Scottish. My mom's side of the pa- uh, family is Panamanian. Yeah. Mm. So I just recently found out actually that a- Angelini means little angel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, shoot, I, I, wow. I'm, I'm mad I just found that out because I would have been juicing that shit for years. <laughs> oh, really? Thought you a little devil. I can't see that. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> a little angel, baby. What yeah. All right, Rocky. Usually on the show, we um, ask about your craziest relationship. I know you're already prepared for this, so <laughs> you've seen. Okay, the- <laughs> craziest relationship is the question. Yeah, craziest relationship like, uh, story, relationship dating story. story. Yeah. So this one's more of like a cautionary tale. Mm. Um, mm. It's more of just like the co- the 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 um, a big lesson learned on this one. I learned a major lesson on this one that I don't think will ever. I'll. I'll I, I really Ooh. took this lesson to heart. So. I had known this girl and like we were pretty flirtatious and like I was thinking something might go somewhere, you know, so we hung out and she came to the spot and she had told me that like she's a really good musician Mm. and like a singer. Uh-huh. And she was like really kind of braggadocious about it. Like mm. I'm not even going to front. She was like, I'm like the shit. Ooh. And so I'm like, all right, cool. We'll come over. We'll hang out. Shoot. Maybe we can make some music together. And um, so we start hanging out and then we get into the music thing. I make like a beat and we go into her. Like we come up with like a, a melody and like a, a some lyrics for her to sing. And like kind of off the bat, like, chemistry was a little weird Mm. i was like i don't know like she's talking a lot um it's not really working and then we get her into the booth bro and i swear dude like it was like two hours of me recording her trying to like just get one usable take wow (laughs) according to her or according to you me because i'm like yo you need to fucking be in key oh Oh, so you're like she's bad so 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 you're like yo that wasn't good enough you gotta read that shit she's just bad dude like and like 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 i tune and out of rhythm yeah just all of it she's really pretty she's really pretty but like no no (laughs) because usually really pretty girls will get guys be like oh you sound great even though when they're like (laughs) but i'm a perfectionist so i'm like (laughs) we need to record that back like I, and, and it took me two hours, bro. And, and I'm telling you guys, like, I'm sorry, but, like, the hook was not hard. It was not complex do fucking re- melody. Do you remember what it was? No, dude. I erased that <laughs> shit from Did you release my, the song? <laughs> hell no. Like, <laughs> and you know what? Like, I acknowledge that, like, there's people who need to work on stuff. I, I, yeah. I really don't want to sound like a complete dick, but it's like, <laughs> yo, you were telling me that you're, like, mm-hmm. the best. So I'm thinking you got vocal chops. Yeah. I'm thinking we're about to cook some hot fire in the studio. <laughs> and it's like two hours of me hitting record just to get one take that I could auto tune. I don't you know, know how you I don't know how Wait, you could stand that. So two, hour, been like, two hours of you recording and did you smash? See that's the thing, it's like <laughs> <laughs> Is that why you see, he's, like, he's, like, he's like, he's like, how could you do that? Well, yeah. like in my, in my head, I'm thinking like the plot is like <laughs> the juice no. must be worth the squeeze. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> Okay, so I'm thinking, well, like, shoot, I'm not going to just tell her all this shit because, like, you know, I'm thinking maybe we got a connection. Maybe we can, maybe, maybe something could happen after this. We can really connect. <laughs> so, oh. so then finally we get, like, a take that we could use. And, like, 
we finally finish and so then we go into hanging mode and i'm thinking this hanging mode is maybe where things will progress and mm-hmm. maybe like this date can like evolve into something else yeah. mm-hmm. you know and so then it ends up evolving into nothing oh. like just and 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 you know i, I know it, it that this is part of the learning lesson on my part it's like you know like who who do i think i am thinking like i maybe was going into it with the wrong you know mm-hmm. um expectations yeah, maybe both- i you both wanted to cl- to click, but it didn't fit. <laughs> <laughs> I was definitely like, I was I was trying to progress things, yeah. and I was made I was wrong for assuming that like it would go that way. Oh man, right? that's the worst so, feeling, bro. And so then, like, you know, it turns into nothing. And not only because it couldn't have been anything, but by the end of it, I was also like, I don't want it to be nothing mm. because, like, I just don't even like you anymore, you know? <laughs> Damn, she was that bad? Jesus Christ. <laughs> well, bro, when I mean, like, when someone's, you know, yeah, yeah, when yeah, someone's yeah. just, like, telling you all this stuff and it's like, okay, so <sighs> nothing happens between us. And so now, like, I have just gone through, like, two hours of aimless recording and so i'm frustrated <laughs> and, and, uh, and mentally or sexually <laughs> <laughs> like maybe a little both you know and, and so like i need to vent to someone mm. so i get a text from another friend <gasps> with like some spotify links but the thing is is i haven't saved this other friend's uh number yet mm. and so i get these links and I'm thinking that it's from this other friend. Uh, so I get these oh links and right away, I'm like, I need to vent about this. Oh my so God. I hit dial. <laughs> no. I call and right away, my friend answers and I'm like, yo, you got to hear this. I was just hanging out with this girl for two hours. She told me she could sing and she freaking was terrible, dude. Like we were in a session for two hours and she didn't do anything and blah. I'm just going off and I hear on the phone, what? That's me. (gasps) That's no. I fucking knew it. I'm like, no, you're not listening. I had this other girl, blah, 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 over, and they were doing this and that, and they were just the worst. And she's literally on the phone like, what are you talking about? It's me. And finally, dude, after me just not even realizing it, I look at my phone, and I'm like, shit. Shit. You hung up? You hung up? And the call, I'm like, I had called the girl who was just in my house Fuck. and I was just ripping into her Rocky. and she's like, Rocky, she's like, oh my God, that's me. And she texts me, what's going on? Oh my God. What are you saying? Like, oh my God. And I'm sitting there. I had called the girl who was just over cause I hadn't saved her number. So what, either. What'd you do after that? I literally just owned it. I was oh, like, really? look, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I was just trying <laughs> You're terrible. Jeez. I was like, look, I'm so sorry. Um, I, I hope you can find it in your heart to forgive me. Oh my God. I am I'm I, I feel so bad and I'm so sorry that I so basically it's a cautionary tale, man. And like the reason I tell it is because don't you dare fucking don't you dare out there f- judge me. Because <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you always save that number. <laughs> Don't you dare judge me because every single one of you motherfuckers have been guilty of talking shit. Mm. <laughs> but you know, that's why you guys are like laughing and it's like, <clears throat> oh my God, because you have talked some shit before. <laughs> and now just imagine that you called Ooh. the person that you were Ooh. talking shit about Ooh. and you just ripped into them. Jeez. But you know what, man? Like I, I, I felt really bad because <laughs> obviously like, 
that hurts but at the same time like i felt like it was a lesson for both of us oh yeah mm. it was a lesson for both of us because she's out here in the streets out here in these streets <laughs> telling people that she's the greatest yeah. singer in the world that she's got ideas on ideas and maybe she needed that too she needed someone to call and, and say you bit. know what you ain't you ain't it yeah. you know <laughs> you, and, mean you ain't shit and and man like you know so it was it was a very it was a it was a major lesson for me mm. on like just talking shit <laughs> you know like like it ain't necessary you know like I got caught in a moment of just <laughs> venting my frustration. Oh, you and got like, caught for it's, sure. It's, 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 <laughs> it's never cool to like be talking shit behind people's backs, yeah. you know? And so now I do my best not to talk. Mm -hmm. And like, that's what I'm saying. Like, don't you dare condemn yeah. me because most people are guilty of talking shit behind people's backs. And like most of us have never had that fucking almighty righteous hammer smashed onto you like I got it. And hey, now you just call them and do it to their face. <laughs> True. Yeah, bro. I had to just rest. I had to I had to rest into the truth and be like, you know what? I'm so sorry, but this that. is the, this that. is the way I felt, and um, it was very wrong of me to talk about you behind your Damn. back. <laughs> that would be so awkward. I can't That's imagine, so, bro. Bro, the fucked up thing is that like I didn't realize she kept telling me it's me, yeah, it's me, you and were so I heated. I was so caught up in thinking it was my other friend that I literally kept being like, no, you're not listening. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was this Wrong. person <laughs> and she told me this and that. And uh, man, I, I have never lived that down. Yeah. I feel so sorry to that person. Um, yeah, maybe it might have been the truth that she needed to hear, but it was wrong of me. Mm -hmm. so it was wrong of me to call someone else and just start laying into yeah. this girl like that. So we'll just because things didn't turn out yeah. how I wanted them. Mm -hmm. So what happened on the second date? Dude, I'm not <laughs> I'm not even gonna front. Like since we're here, we're here, we're present, we're we're telling the truth. I'm not even going to front, man. Another learning lesson was the time came, bro, where like I ended up because she was actually a mutual. I met her through a mutual friend. Mm -hmm. This mutual friend invited me to a party and she was there after. Mm. And so I had a I, I did have an opportunity to like confront her and, and be like, yo, I'm sorry. But the thing was, is like I just kept looking for that moment. But we're at a party and, you know, and I just really felt like anytime I'd be on this side of the party, she was on that side of the party. Oh, right. And I felt like I was trying to, like, catch her. But <laughs> I, I, I do felt there was a little bit of a, like, avoidance Ooh, happening yeah. where, like, and, and even in that moment, I really wish I would have had the fucking cojones enough to go admit my flaws mm. and go apologize to her. And I, I'm really <sighs> sorry about that. Damn. And I really learned a major lesson about that. Like, it was really wrong of me to to act like we were all yeah. cool yeah. And, and to do that. And then to, like, just right when she leaves. She was driving home, bro. And, Damn. like, she just gets a call from me. Like, yo, this girl freaking sucks. <laughs> <laughs> this girl's trash. Yeah. And, but, but, man, like, just, 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 like, all the shit talking isn't always necessary. Yeah, and, I agree with that. And, like, yeah. you know, I was definitely in the wrong. I take full responsibility for that. And I yeah. felt really bad about it. And, 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 it, but. It, dude, tell me all. Tell me that ain't a funny ass story. Because, <laughs> dude, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. And, 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 and the reason it's funny is because all of us have talked shit. Just be careful what you say, man. And you know what? Like now that I'm older, like this is years ago. Mm -hmm. This is years ago. This happened years ago, and that was a major lesson for me. That was a major lesson of like. You know what, dude? Like, don't talk about people behind their backs. Yep. And if you have an opinion, like, that could have been voiced as constructive criticism. Oh, yeah. I, I could have, you know, I, the man I am now would have maybe pulled her aside and said, hey, maybe you could do this. Maybe you could do that. Like, 
but but because I had gone into the situation with these mm. expectations, I thought that there was romantic involvement, mm. it, it, and it didn't happen. It blinded you a little it bit. It blinded me. So then, yeah. since I didn't get any play, yeah. once she left, <laughs> I <Yeah>. had a... <laughs> 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 once she left once she left I had a chip on my shoulder yeah. because because I was over here thinking that because I had gone through all that fucking shit two hours of torture two hours of torture and you and no even play I was a little upset my <laughs> I was a little upset oh. and, and I called her and I roasted her to her face yes. and wow. and um I'll never forget that, and I'll always think about that when I'm tempted to talk shit about someone. <laughs> yep. Now you know, dude. Now you know. That is my cautionary tale for you guys. <laughs> good, I really do have a big heart. I promise. I'm sorry. I'm sorry um, for doing that. Uh, it was a big. It was a major lesson learned. All right, guys. Welcome back to Lightning Run, where we ask our guests some rapid fire questions. Rocky. Yes. Are you ready? Yes. One, two, three. <laughs> Who is your favorite artist? Uh, I'd say Jameson. Who? Jameson. Oh, Jameson. Jameson. Yeah. No, your favorite artist, not your drink. <laughs> <laughs> okay, your favorite drink. Tequila. Ooh. Oh, All Latino. day. Okay, All day. okay. Uh, somebody that inspires you. Priscilla. Oh. Mm. So, something that scares you. Um, something that scares me. Um, there's something that scares me. Sorry. Um, drink. Yeah, you got to drink. <laughs> I ain't scared of shit. <laughs> hey, that's why. Huh? You still have to answer. Oh, yeah, you still, <laughs> yeah, you still have to oh, Something that scares me. Um, failure. Mm. Okay. What do you regret? One uh, thing that you regret. last story I just told you guys. <laughs> <laughs> What's your fetish? Um, just like I like it. I like it, you know, messy. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. I like it messy. All right, all right, all right. Yeah. All right. That's fair enough. <laughs> if you weren't a rapper, what would you be? Uh, I'm a, a masseuse. Oh, oh you wow. have said that? Yeah, he's got good what? hands. Yeah, yeah he's I got get hands. great massages. He's got what? hands. He's got hands. Yeah. That's, That's super interesting. Yeah, I would be a masseuse. What are you looking oh. forward to for this next year? Um, uh, refining myself. Piano. Uh, I just picked up trumpet. Oh, okay. Mm. Nice. So I want to learn. I played Learning. trumpet. I used play to. trumpet? I used to. Sick, dude. I used to. Show me that embouchure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if there's one thing you could tell the audience, one thing that you've learned, what would it be? You're loved. You know, might not be by me, but <laughs> <laughs> I feel like definitely you're talking to someone. <laughs> yeah, definitely. If it takes you two hours yes. to sing, <laughs> someone will buy you a Tempur-Pedic mattress. That's what I think. Yeah. If you want him to love you, don't buy him a Tempur-Pedic mattress. <laughs> uh, be yourself. If you could pick up one instrument and master it, what would it be? Piano. Yeah. Oh, nice, nice. What was your biggest light bulb moment in your life so far? Freestyling in the alleyways of my high school streets. Mm. Um, that was the first time people recognized me in my in my art form oh, and nice. gave me validation to oh. pursue music. So freestyling, that was an aha moment. That's when I said, this is what I want to do because I can feel it in me. Mm. It's in me. Okay, okay. Yeah. Like that. One thing you you would change about yourself if you could. Discipline. Discipline. Yeah. Okay, well, discipline in what way? Um, I'm very just like, I'm very capable of starting new things. Oh. It's finishing other things that I could be better at. Got it. Okay, okay. Hmm. Finishing before starting, you know? <laughs> sure. This is a family podcast. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, your dream collab. Um, Ooh, that's a good one. Jameson, dude. Oh, dude. I want to rock a song with Jameson. That'd be sick. I love Jameson. Yeah. The drink and the artist. Yeah. <laughs> He's lit. All right. Uh, where do you see yourself in like three years? Three years... Um, uh, a functioning pianist, oh, nice. um, an artist who's not only a rapper, but a musician. I really mm. want to be a musician. That's oh, where I okay. see myself is um, leveling up in my 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 piano mm. and trumpet as well. But trumpet's kind of just something I'm taking for fun. So really mostly just like my goal mm -hmm. is to be able to play all of my songs and to make music. I want to rap and play piano oh, that, at yeah. the same time. Yeah. That Separate so myself cool. like that. That's that what I want to so do. Cool. That's where I'm going. Nice, nice. Okay. Dream venue to play at. Um, Red Rocks. Oh, Red Rocks. Oh, that's sick. sick. That's yeah. a good choice. 
That's a good choice. Uh, one day, baby, choice. one day. Yeah. All right, guys, that concludes our lightning round. I want to say thank you to our incredibly cool, funny, and so amazing guest, Rocky Angelini. Thank you. Let us know where we can find you. Rocky Angelini, R O C K Y A N G E L I N I. Angelini, little angel, baby. Little angel. <laughs> little angel, baby. Now he's going to use it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for joining us during this episode. Make sure you like, subscribe, and comment below what you guys want us to listen to or talk about next. And remember, live, live fast, eat ass. ass.